thinking about it for about a year since I decided to sell my house. So my house sold December 15th and I got the van just as a in-between kind of placeholder for myself. So it's nice not, you know, when you have a house that you built yourself and you do all your own work and you have a farm that you work on all the time. And I thought, you know, this would be a really nice way to just, you know, let it all go and just really simplify. This is kind of, you know, while I wait and figure out what the next step is gonna be. Hi, my name's Sharon, and this is my 2020 Ram Pro Master 2500. Drives just like a car, super comfortable inside, great visibility. Mine's a little bit longer. I think mine's like a 20 footer. Don't really have a name for it yet. Uh, I've been tossing around. One of my friends called it Avanti e Coraggio, which means forward and courage. So that's kind of my mission. I've been looking at vans for about a year, just trying to find the right one. I thought I was gonna get a Sprinter and I ended up getting, uh, my friend found this one for me. He's done a couple of van build outs and he's like, this one's really nice. It has a lot of nice features. I mean, it's it's beautiful. As far as space goes, there's there's just a tremendous amount of storage. I'm not even using all of it. This was something I asked him to add on. There wasn't um, a cabinet here, but I really am like, I gotta have a pantry to put all my food in. <laughs> so he added this cabinet and a friend of mine, he didn't have enough of this really nice um, bamboo um, left, so he didn't do the door, but I had a friend of mine do the door and I asked him to put magnetic panel on here so I could put these really nice the hooks and you know you're hanging like bathing suits or towels or whatever you know you can put pictures of your family so this pantry it's kind of cool i put this little hook here and this is how this works these are really cool just a threaded bolt and there's a piece of alt thread receiver in there and when i drive there's some stuff that comes out but oh i didn't actually have it but giant pantry and i'm really super kind of an order freak so i like everything contained so i was really lucky also i have this no skid fabric here and then these bins so i can just pull these out and it takes a whole bunch of stuff out it also keeps things from falling out while while driving the other thing that's really nice here so it's, we have the lagoon table which you know articulates in many many different ways this entire, you can swing out, you can sit here, you know, you lower it if you're working on your laptop or watching a movie. Sometimes I pop this up and my friend and I can sit here and watch and we can have the movie on this. So this is nice, but when you pop this completely out, this seat jackknifes out. There's the guest bed, <laughs> which is really clever. So this is like my office <laughs> in here. I have my safe money and passport and titles and important papers so any kind of filing i've got my you know i keep my electronics in here and the books i'm currently reading and this is really nice you can it folds in like this and then this is you can lock this drawer so this is shoes in here um also i know everyone wants to know how you do your business on the road right why do people go with the five gallon bucket? I just don't need that much. <laughs> I went with a two gallon bucket. Plastic really does retain a lot of odors. And so what I do is I have this bag fitted in. It's just ready to go whenever I need it. Underneath, I put in some water and some bleach just to keep that odor off of the um, plastic. Cause no matter whether you have a bag or not that the odor sticks in, this is just regular pipe insulation and you can sit on it and do your business. You know, I'm just gonna do this for the ladies. Pea bottle. Oh, so envious of guys. This is probably a little intimate, but we gotta show you. It's called the Wiz something. Anyway, um, what's nice about this is it's antimicrobial. You can, you know, spray it with your vinegar water stuff, um, but it's your female urinal and you can pee in there without dripping at all it's also really fun to just go stand outside and pee like a guy i just laughed my ass off the first time i did it it's so fun anyway there's that this is the you know emergency and it's like the bathroom stuff is all in here i have a dometic refrigerator 
surprisingly, it does a really nice job. Ice, so I've got drinks in here, anything, you know, fruits, vegetables, and you can set the temperature. This model doesn't have a little Bluetooth, so I bought a Accurite temperature sensor, and it also does humidity, so I can keep track of the temperature in there. Little, you know, under a thousand watt microwave. I keep it unplugged most of the time, but who knows? I, I don't use it that much. I might get rid of it at some point. So we've got a closet and a lot of people might think it's not a really big closet, but I found these really cool things. I'm going to pull one out and it's going to be really hard to get it back in. These are velvet cascading hangers. So I can hang up to four items in here vertically and not use up that much space. So these are really cool. You can get them online. I keep my laundry in there. This is where the espresso pot lives and you know, coats are in here, booze, got my umbrella. There's still plenty of room. I mean, I can, I can jam a lot of stuff in here. It's not even maximized. Water pumps in here with a little switch and there's also a mechanical switch that's kind of just a valve that opens my gray water tank. I've also got my Ames power controller for the inverter here so I can turn the inverter on, off, or put it in, um, power save mode. Down here, this, and I'm still figuring out where I'm going to store everything. There's so much space, so it's nice to have options. I know a lot of people don't have options, but I have great options. So this is where I have all my um, cleaning supply, cocktails, you know, if I'm serving cocktails out in the campground. Um, but yeah, cleaning supplies, all my um, dishes are in here, um, bags, paper towels. This is where all the dog stuff is. So, you know, we've got the, you know, hippo, we've got all his medication. He's got his winter jacket, his treats, you know, the invisible leash, his ball. Yeah. Over here, I've got spices. And the guy who built the van did this, put a little nice magnetic thing. And I'm really fanatic. I like to have my knives sharp and not rattling around. I've got some mixed spices in here. I've got my regular 110 outlets here. Two USB ports with this light that's extremely bright in the middle of the night when it's dark. So keep the lid shut. This sink is, it's, I guess it's, it's nice for, it's a little overkill, but I lived in an RV when I was building my house and I had this tiny little sink and it drove me nuts. I hated it. I mean, I haven't really used it a ton, you know, but it's really, it's just nice to have a big deep stainless sink and you have to worry. I liked, you know, keeping things in there. I have a 35 gallon tank of water with a filtrate filter on it, which is totally fine, but I decided to get just this little two gallon thing of for just drink it if I'm just drinking water I'm not heating it or whatever so this is where I fill up for water there's actually an overflow hose so you don't have to stand inside and watch you can actually have a visual on the 35 gallon water tank in there but if you didn't there's an overflow hose so you'll hear it start emptying on the ground if you've filled too far this is my kitchen drawer so I've got my cloth napkins my dish towels cutting board and all my utensils here so that's that's the utensil drawer but I can get at everything pretty easily in here this is the junk drawer I don't know you live in a van you think you can get away from the junk drawer you can't down here is the water heater. I've got four gallons of water at 180 degrees. That mixed with cold water gives you like five, seven gallons, depending on how hot you want your water. Really nice warm water. 35 gallon water tank over there. Over here, mostly empty, but I put some pots and pans. Uh, my instant pot, the butane for the cooktop. Down below is chains for winter driving. I've got the blocks in case I'm on crooked ground. And then up in front of that is the battery, um, battery charging inverter. So queen size bed, you can sleep either direction. You can also sleep head this way if you want. Got the reading lights over here. It isn't a big deal. Everyone's got a headlamp these days. I have, let's see, these um, six inch memory foam 
um, with zippered upholstery just in case they get dirty. No trouble sleeping up here. It's extremely spacious and when you have a lab, unfortunately, I mean most of the time he likes to sleep with me so I have to get him up into the bed and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, but the bed will actually completely fold away. It's a Murphy bed and it'll fold up all back in here. So if you're using it for more of a weekend trip, the Murphy bed's really nice. Just shove it out of the way. You've got, look at this giant counter. I don't know what you're gonna make on this counter, but it's a huge amount of space and pretty easy to stow. Okay, 82 pound elderly lab. How do you get him into the bed? You know, he's staring up at you with those big brown eyes every night like he wants to sleep with you. He's sometimes slept on the floor, but it's not good. When we're on long trips, like over a couple of hours and I'm on highway, I'm going to put him up here where he's got a mattress and he's safe and he's not wandering around. So what's nice about this is he's got, he's got both the windows so he can see. Otherwise, there's no windows in here for him to look out and he can't hear so he gets a little disoriented. So this stays locked in. Obviously the back doors are shut. He can peek over the top. He'll stand up if he needs something and I can see him, keep an eye on him with the rear view mirror. For all of you people who like to take charge of packing your trunks like I do, you know, there is an art form to packing and I just totally lucked out with how much space I had here and how I have figured everything out, but it's got a nice fit and you know, nobody likes to hear all that stuff rattling while you're driving down the road. So first thing that I have is I got a gravel bike because you know, you're in a van. I know a lot of people bring more than one bike, but I just wanted to bring one bike and more stuff. So I got a gravel bike that'll go road and mountain. And I decided not to mount it to the floor of the van, but instead I mounted it on a piece of plywood, a uh, nice birch plywood so that there's nothing piercing the deck here. And then this is my tools and gear, anything I need to fix things. This is just kind of miscellaneous, you know, dog stuff, extra books, all kinds of, you know, whatever, just um, household stuff. There's a household bin back there that has my toilet paper, my paper towels, extra towels if I have extra linen, if I have someone come and visit me. Um, and then in the lower bin is all my recreation gear. So it's really nice if you're out and it's raining or not nice weather and you need to get at something either inside or outside, I can pull all this stuff out, stack it, it's watertight. And uh, I don't have to dig through a ton of stuff. I know what's in each bin. The fellow who built this name is um, Jordan Dice, lives in Sunnyvale. He did the build out on it. This is his third van and he's doing more. So what he did is he just, because this cabinet runs the full length, it actually blocked where the door handle is, um, which was not something I liked. So what I did is, um, so anyway, he took, he has the real nice wool insulation in here. And then this is just a regular panel and he wrapped like contact paper on it and then put just these screws in and they have threaded receivers on the inside so the panels can come off. So no windows on the back, but um, just covered it with this. Um, but what I did is I took the panel off with my friend and because it's kind of a safety issue, I think if you're sleeping in the van and there's a fire or something, you need to get out. There's no way to get out. So um, just rigged up this string that actuates the door handle. So if I'm in bed, I can just pull it up and I can open the door. And then there's a little handle there so I can shut it from the inside also. A couple of add-on features. We've got the extended mirrors here. There's a nice glass panel here, which is great when you're switching lanes. It's super handy. I've been in a lot of vans that don't have it. And it's this is, I think, for safety, it's really nice. There's also small window on both sides inside where the bed is, which gives it a nice cross draft. We've got shore power here, which is uh, connected to my inverter and the inverter handles all the shore power charging. And uh, I've got some Renogy solar panels. I've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery and a Renogy battery charger. This is uh, my dog Bogey. I'm his service human. So pretty much everything is all about Bogey. He had a little fall. We, I had a little collapsible step that he used to use 
to get in and out of the van, but he fell going out like in the middle of the night once. And uh, so I kind of upgraded to the ramp. It's a trifold ramp. I'll either put it here and it fits really nicely there, or I'll travel with it like that. And the reason for that is dogs get really excited when you open the door and they want to run out and he'll get hurt. So if I have it stowed there, I can get it ready to deploy, open the door, and then get it out. I've been all over the world. I mean, I know the culture of travel, but I don't know the whole van life. I'm still brand new at it. And I mean, it's a great community. People are really, really open to sharing. I mean, when you meet people, they're like, let me see your van. And other people want to see your van. And it's what a great, you know, cross-pollination of ideas. It's a little tougher now, you know, with COVID because um, the way things were a year ago when I had the idea to go on the road, I think people have to be a lot more resourceful or just not have as many needs, I guess. You know, if number one, you know, do your research. If you can do it yourself, do it yourself because you get what you want. And as long as you have the time, I mean, you can configure it how you want, but you know, there's a lot of resources out there and don't, nothing shameful about seeing what other people have done. So ask questions, look online. You know, you can go super simple. This van's pretty complicated. You know, it's got solar, it's got this, it's got that. You know, you can get by with, you know, jerry cans of water and no solar and you'll be fine. You know what, the whole reason we're doing van life, slow the f down, right? Like, like my friend says, late for what? Like, I don't have anywhere to be. But you know, you gotta get you gotta get in that mindset, you know, where you're you're in van life now and I mean just look at Bogey. Like he's totally happy, just like hanging out. You know, keep it simple.